Good day students, welcome to mathcodeserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to solve radical equations. Don't forget we have some practice problems at the end of this presentation for you to try out in order to demonstrate mastery of the contents of this presentation. All right, to get us started, we're going to take a look at the steps that will be guiding our problem solving process. So um, let's take a look at it. So when you're solving uh, radical equations, the ones that we are going to be solving today will be the one where the you have a radical equal to a binomial expression when the radical component is isolated. All right, that's the type of problem we're going to be looking at today. So the first step and the types of problem we're going to be looking at today is to isolate the radical. Okay. So we're going to put it in the form, the binomial equal to the uh, radical. That's how we're going to set it up. After isolating the radical, the goal of isolating the radical is to eliminate it. Okay, so eliminate it with the inverse operation, which is to square. So you're going to square both sides. to uh, eliminate the radical. All right, upon the elimination of the radical, you're then going to proceed to solve the resulting equation. Solve the equation. It could be a linear equation or a quadratic equation, whatever it is. You just go ahead and solve that. And then step number four, which is extremely important, is to check for extraneous solutions check for extraneous solutions. When you are solving radical equations, you can either have um, one solution, you can have no solution, or you could have two solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the example that we're gonna be doing. Instructions are for us to solve for x. So for number one, let's say we have the radical equation x equals the square root of 57 minus 4x plus 3. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite the problem. We have x equals uh, the square root of 57 minus 4x plus quantity plus 3. So the first step involves um, isolating the radical, okay? So this radical term right here, we want to have it um, isolated. Every other thing needs to be moved over to the other side so we can easily eliminate it without complications or add, add in unnecessary number of steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation. And then when we do that, we're going to have... Um, x minus 3 is equal to the square root of 57 minus 4x. All right, so now we've isolated the radical, and we have the format the binomial equals to a radical. Now we're going to get rid of the radical by squaring both sides of the equation, okay? So we're going to square the left side of the equation and then we're going to square the right side of the equation. On the left side, we're going to have this binomial be multiplied by itself. So x minus 3 times x minus 3. And on the right side, the square and the square roots are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. And we're left with uh, 57 minus 4x. Now on the left side, we're going to have to simplify that. We're going to distribute the x across both terms. Just FOIL it out. And then negative 3 across both terms. All right, so when we do the multiplication, we're going to have um, x squared minus 3x. First outer inner minus 3x plus 9. Last equals 57 minus 4x. So now we're going to solve this resulting equation, okay? 
So it's a quadratic equation. So let's simplify the left side first. We have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 57 minus 4x. So if we think back to solving equa uh, quadratic equations, there are different ways we can do it. So we can use the quadratic formula, completing the square factoring or graphing. All right, we're going to attempt to use um, factoring in this problem. So the first move is to place it in standard form, okay, equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to um, subtract, uh, so 57, we'll subtract 57 from both sides, okay, and then also we want to move the 4x to the left, so we're going to add 4x to both sides. So subtract 57 and add 4x, so we'll have it in standard form equal to 0. All right, if we do that, let's move our work up to the upper left right here. If we do that, we're going to have the following resulting situation. We're going to have um, x squared. Now, if we combine these two minus 6x plus 4x, that's going to give us negative 2x minus 2x. And then positive 9 minus 57, just subtract and keep the sign of the bigger. So we have minus 48 equals 0. Okay, so now we're going to solve this resulting equation by, uh, we're going to attempt to solve it by factoring. We're going to use the x game or ac method here. If that doesn't work, then we will just use the quadratic formula because that always works. Alrighty, so uh, AC goes on top, AC is negative 48, B is negative 2, alright, because that's A right there, 1, A, B, C, in standard form. So we figure out two numbers that multiply to give us negative 48 and add to give us 2. So if you can't do that mentally, just list all the fact, uh, all the integer that integers that multiply to give you 48, so 1 times 48. 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, 6 times 8, um, 7 doesn't go into 48, right? So that's all the integer pairs that multiply to give us uh, 48 that we have. All right, so the question now is which of these pair of integers multiply to give us, uh, for um, add to give us two, okay? Either addition or subtraction, we can clearly see that the six, eight pair will suffice here, okay? So six and eight, how can we make it work? Um, since the sum is negative, then the bigger one has to be negative right there, smaller than both of them. So we have um, 6 minus 8 is negative 2. 6 times negative 8 is negative 48. Excellent. Now we can factor by grouping or just head right to the factored state. In this particular problem, uh, since we have a situation where a is equal to 1, uh, grouping is not necessary. Okay, no need for grouping. We can just jump right to the factored state which is going to be x plus 6 combine x with the first number and then x minus 8 equals 0 so that's the factored state now using the zero product property we're going to set both factors to 0 so x plus 6 equals 0 and x minus 8 equals 0 and then we're going to solve okay first one subtract 6 from both sides we have x equals negative 6 and then the last one, the second one, just add 8 to both sides. And you have x equals 8. Okay? So these are our possible solutions. So possible solutions. So how do we know which is which? If one or more of them are extraneous, how do we know? Well, we're going to have to do a check. We're going to have to plug in the answers, the possible answers into the original problem, and then see which yields a true statement. Whichever one yields a true statement, that will be a solution. If it doesn't yield a true statement, then we'll know that that particular solution is extraneous. 
Okay. So how do we do our check? Uh, all we simply do is plug in the answers into the original question. The original question is X. Um, let's try that again. The question is X minus, no, X equals the square root of 57 minus 4X plus 3. Okay. The first one we're going to try out is X equals negative 6. Let's see if that works. Let's test that in. So we're going to plug in negative 6 for the X's here. So the question now is, is negative 6, is it equal to the square root of 57 minus 4 times negative 6 plus 3? All right, let's work it out. So is negative 6 equal to the square root of 57 minus 4 times minus 6 is positive 24? Is negative 6 equal to that plus 3? Is negative 6 equal to 57 plus 24 is 81? Root 81 plus 3? Is negative 6 equal to root 81 is 9? 9 plus 3? And then is negative 6 equal to positive 12? The answer is no. This is a false statement. So that tells us that the first answer, negative 6, is extraneous. Okay? So the second one could be an answer. It could also be extraneous. We don't know. So we just have to test the second one also. All right? So let's test the second answer that we have, which is x equals 8. We're going to plug it into the question, okay? So is 8 equal to the square root of 57? Minus 4 times 8, is it? Plus 3? We don't know. Let's simplify the right side. So is 8 equal to the square root of 57 minus 32 plus 3? Is 8 equal to the square root of 57 minus 32 is 25? Is it equal to the square root of 25 plus 3? Is 8 equal to the square root of 25 is 5 plus 3? Is 8 equal to 8? Absolutely. So that's a true statement that checks out. So whenever you have a true statement, we know that that's an answer. Okay? So this one is extraneous. That doesn't work, and this works. Um, so x equals negative 6 is extraneous. So our solution, the only solution that we have, to this radical equation is x equals 8. So we see the importance of doing a check because um, extraneous solutions can be introduced when we are squaring both sides of the equation. Okay? So that's why you always want to do your check whenever you're solving radical equations. Okay, so it's now time for you to try out some practice problems. All right, so here are two problems we'd like you to try out. The task is to solve these two for x, and then check your answers, of course, for extraneous solutions. So go ahead and pause the video presentation at this time, try these two problems, and then when you're done, click on the playback button, and we'll reveal what the correct answers are. All right, welcome back. So here are the solutions to the practice problems. For number one, the answer is 7 and 8. And then for number two, the answer is x equals 7. So how well did you do in these two practice problems? Let us know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, also feel free to specify it so we can assist you. Thanks for supporting our channel with your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Tons of support resources can be found at matgoserve.com. Do check it out. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Goodbye.